Advanced Parameters in PowerShell. Hi, I'm Don Jones, and once you start turning your scripts and functions into advanced scripts and functions, you pick up a lot of additional capabilities for your parameters. You can actually make PowerShell do an incredible amount of work for you with very little extra typing on your part. So I have a script already prepared, and this is not yet an advanced script. So I'm going to make it an advanced script by simply adding the commandlet binding. And it's important that I type that correctly. There we go. That's the good color, commandlet binding. Now that I've done that, I can start to add a lot of different capabilities to my parameters. For example, I'm going to take off this default value. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell PowerShell that this should be a string. It should expect to see a string there. And I'm going to give it some metadata about this parameter. For example, it's mandatory, spelled right. Uh, what you'll see a lot of people do is actually hit enter after this there. This is still technically one parameter. If I had a second parameter, I would often do a comma. I might put a blank line. Like that. So I've created a second mandatory parameter called file path. And this comma there separates the two. But this is all one hunk. This little set of attributes only applies to computer name. Now, just to keep things simple, I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. We're just going to focus on one of these. There's a bunch of other things you can add to this. For example, um, let's say computer name is not the first thing that leaps to your mind when you think about a parameter that's going to accept a computer name. Maybe you think host name instead. Now I can run this with either. Uh, for example, let's go down here to the shell. This is named get sysinfo. I can type minus and hit tab, and it'll tab complete that for me. How about if I do minus host name? And even if you prefer host, that's OK, because that's a truncated version of host name, and PowerShell will still accept it. If I try to run this without any parameters, I get prompted for it, because I had marked it as mandatory. There's a whole help file that explains all these different things you can do. Help about, this is a long one, about functions, advanced parameters. So you've got the parameter attribute. Um, you can see the mandatory argument here that I used. There's a position argument. If you've got more than one, that's useful. Parameter sets, tell it to take a value from the pipeline. Um, you can put a help message. There's alias. I use that one. And there's a bunch of other cool ones for parameter validation. Let's see. Uh, validate count, validate length. Let's mess with those for a second. Validate count. I want at least one and no more than five computer names. Now, to make it accept more than one, I've got to put a little bracket bracket right there. I don't really have the rest of my command rigged up to support multiples, so maybe that's not a good one. Maybe instead, maybe instead I can say validate length. You know, I know that the computer names in my environment are always at least 10 characters and never more than 12 characters. Let's see what that does. Try and run that command. It's going to prompt me because I, I didn't provide a value. So let's just put... Uh, Localhost. That should be too short. Yep. I cannot validate that argument because the number of characters, 9, that you specified is too small. It has to be greater than or equal to 10. Oh, all right. Well, that's fine. Let's run it again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S. How about that? Nope, that's too long. It's got to be less than or equal to 12. So PowerShell's actually doing a lot of work for me. And there's other little things you can put in there too. There's validate pattern. Uh, let's see if I can scroll up to the help file. There's range pattern. This lets you specify a regular expression. So you can say, you know that I know in my environment, our computer names always kind of have this particular form. Uh, it's three letters followed by two digits followed by four more letters. So you can have PowerShell validate that. You don't have to write any of that code yourself. There's another thing feature that you get for free simply by adding commandlet binding. I'm going to add some robust 
verbose output. Using double quotation marks, so I can just stick the variable name in there and it'll automatically expand. So there it is, right verbose. So here we go. Uh, oh, you know what? I do need to make sure I can query against local host. So let's ratchet this down to an eight character requirement. Let's try it again. Get sysinfo, computer name, local host. Hey, where's my verbose output? Oh, well, you got to add the verbose switch. I didn't have to code that switch at all. Simply by adding the commandlet binding, I get that for free. And then all I have to do is use write verbose. If I use the minus verbose parameter, this output shows up. If I omit the parameter, that output is suppressed. So some really useful tricks for making your scripts kind of more professional without a lot of work on your part. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.